Blitz is defined as a sudden, savage attack. It is indeed all this. The effect is sure. The premise is simple. It's a basic, primal confrontation, man to man. No excuses are offered. None except. Welcome to the latest edition of Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. Looks like a radio station. Now, here are your hosts, lifetime Longhorn Rod Babers. Pure athlete, yeah. I transcend race, hombre. Matt Butler. I don't talk <laughs> man. I back it up. And we are chock full of that, man. Damn right. And Jeff Howe. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Cause Stone Cold said so. If you're gonna blitz, come strong. But don't come at all. Coming strong with another edition of Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. I am Jeff Howe. Let me go ahead and bring in the rest of the team because uh, we've got some schedules to get to. It's a schedule game. We're going to go through as much as we can get to today and then finish it up over the next couple of weeks. So let me bring in the rest of the team. He's the master of the soundboard, the drop machine extraordinaire, Matt Butler. Matt, how are you, sir? Doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm great. Man, nice. Dynamite you intro there. Yes. <laughs> I expect a little more, man. You can elaborate a little oh, that bit. That was great. That was very genuine. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was, was remarking was about how odd fun. we can't even see the city behind <laughs> us. We have a lot of Saharan haze. We have a lot of uh, rain also coming in. But, yeah, man, enjoying the summer. It's been a good time. Yeah, yeah enjoying the summer. My wife and I are going to Houston. Uh, to, to, tomorrow's Tuesday, so we'll be go down Astros. there tomorrow. Yeah, there going to go. go to the Astros game. What are uh, you playing? Oh, nice. The Swingin' uh, A's of Oakland. Yep, they're going to yeah, rock okay, Frankie you. Montas tonight. Yeah. Frankie right. Montas, no good. No, the Astros, yeah. No, the Astros are, I mean, that's 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 one of the most exciting. That's probably the Golden State Warriors of baseball right now in terms of going taking, to see uh, the team play. Take, I know the Yankees are exciting to watch, too, because they got the Bombers back. But Take yeah. our daughter to her first baseball game at four months old, almost five. That's nice. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, the so, AL right now is sort of like goes. the uh, way that you saw the yeah. Western Conference. It was like the West, all the good teams are out there. It's like the AL is the same way with the Astros and Cleveland and then with the Boston, and you end up having Mariners and Yankees, the best five teams in baseball, all out West. I've seen uh, these videos like of dads with their – uh, children at games mm-hmm. and have to protect them from foul balls and Babies. stuff. So yeah. be aware, bro. Yeah, the dad like Spidey sense comes out. Apparently, like, these people become amazing athletes. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, because they're protecting their children from bats flying and balls. I'm just saying. Also, I'm though, it out there, you know no, saying? it does because like just when I'm sure you're aware, when bro. I'm walking through the house with her and I'm like you know trip over the dog or something. Like wow, I've got balance that I never knew. Oh, I'm telling you, there's these great videos. You should look them up on YouTube. Uh, it's like I don't know what they call them. It's like dads who save their mm-hmm, children mm-hmm. from stuff, and it just got like to music, like montage music, and they're like blocking like bats and like co- like these uh, like little cars, like you know, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, little mini cars that kids are driving from running over kids like it could be just a, you just see literally this kid would die if not for this dad literally blocking the baseball from hitting the kid's head <laughs> randomly he's like doing it like magic johnson would throw a pass it's like backhanded also it's beautiful stuff man other but things I think it's dad sense i think god yeah. gives you the ability to do stuff like it's like moms who can lift cars yeah. That, does that ever happen? Does that really happen? We've all heard this. Uh, I I don't know about actually. A mother can lift, <laughs> lift a car. I've heard of people. Uh, I've heard of people like lifting uh, like like Coke machines, like a soda machine or a vending machine. I can lift a soda somebody. machine, not lift it, but oh. I can move it. No, like Those people things. like lift, like if it you know fell Bell. on somebody or whatever, like just being able to go over there and oh. pick it up. That fight or flight response. Right? I might hurt my. Talking about adrenaline. the fly, the yeah, fly balls good. though. The instincts also sure. will come out because there are also those videos where the person, the fa- new father or the boyfriend, his instinct isn't to save. It's to react like well, and cower. So also sometimes <laughs> you'll see the person that then like you might end a relationship or like be exposed uh, as the viral bad father who doesn't save the kid. Man, so, for your kid? Uh, yes. I've seen that for like girlfriends. Uh, yeah, significant others. Just but point being, kids. I've seen many People times. save their kids. Normally. But even, at least, you, at least you can learn a lot POSs. more than you would think on a foul ball. All right. I should not be talking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> saving baby. Yeah. <laughs> so let me enjoy my anyway. baseball experience on That's Tuesday. That's my fault. Yeah. I apologize. It'll be fun. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> the third member of our team. He. Uh, this is where we go with him because he's the Renaissance man here on our show. He's also our lockdown corner, lifetime long corner, 2002 UT All America, 2002 semifinalist. For the Jim Thorpe Award, fourth-round draft choice of the New York Giants back in 2003, spent his NFL career with the Giants, Lions, Bears, Bucks, Broncos, and a year with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. 
of the CFL. When he was done with football, got himself back to Austin, Texas, in the 40 acres where he earned his degree. If he knew where his T ring was, he would wear it proudly. But nevertheless, he is a card carrying member of DBU. Number 21 in your program, but number one in your hearts forever and ever, Mr. Rod Babers. And, uh, Rod, I got to tell you, man, LHN's been running like the Rod Babers Marathon mm. lately. It seems like every time I flip it on LHN, there's a game from your era that's Damn on. It, man. I've watched those. The 2002 North Carolina game was on there. I wish yep. I could DVR I think that was on the floor. Oh, oh, man, we got, I, I did DVR one because of a comment DVR. that Sean McDonough made about you. So after the podcast last week when you brought up the 01 – a and M game, yeah. and you brought up that McDonough was quoting Rod in that game and was really enjoying yeah. it. So late mm-hmm. in the, it's the third quarter, and I think third or fourth quarter, you hop a route, you're about to pick it, and the ball comes up and it hits your hands, and McDonough doesn't even call the play, he starts laughing, and he's like, "That was Rod Babers, ball off the hands, being completion <laughs> there." And I had to rewind it and record it, so I'm gonna show it to you <laughs> the next time you're down south. Yeah, see, I, it's amazing. McDonough was like totally connected to you, and literally from the season before the A and M game to the North Carolina game, three games removed, it was him watching you. He knows I. He knows I was dropping money out there. That, re- like, that really that tickled Sean McDonough. Your line about nobody <laughs> catches the ball on my side of the field, not even me. Yeah, it was yeah. a good line. Matt he brought Brown it up. Like it. Another one that I noticed, two Nebraska games. The first one where Cody Clemens is a little kid on the sideline after the Jamal Charles touchdown, which was awesome. It was on. But they replayed the the Gary Gilbert game. game. Did y'all see they replayed the Gary Gilbert game? That's one of the most amazing games in the history of Texas football. It was amazing. I watched it. Seven completions total in that game. Yes, Rex Burkhead dropped a touchdown. Everybody dropped touchdowns. It was some (laughs) some crazy absurd He was four for 16 for like 70 yards and ran for almost 100. He ran for like 70. Cody Johnson had like 70-something yards in that game, too. Well, and then the damn field goal turned into touchdown yeah. to make it 2013 after yeah, a game sure. of mush champ dominance and then you almost lose it yeah. you know what i remember about that that field goal return i remember chris whaley was on the field goal team and i remember watching him trying to run down uh i don't remember who the guy i think it was eric Haig, maybe yep. from nebraska 100 percent right and i remember chris whaley trying to run him down i'm like dude this is when chris Whaley was still a running back too by the way yeah I was like, dude, he looks like a pulling guard yeah. trying to run that guy down. There's no way this His guy's hips. playing running back. Yeah. <laughs> like, in, the, in this game, this momentum swinging play, and I'm like, damn, Chris Whaley, That's slow. All you saw. I was like, oh, no, that guy ain't playing. <laughs> he's, he's, he ain't playing running back. He's doing something else. <laughs> he can go play defensive end. Or something. And he ended up being a really good defensive tackle. He really was. He was, I mean, NFL worthy if he didn't get hurt so Spent much. two years with the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. just injuries. Injuries, injuries befell um, yeah. Chris Whaley. But we're not going to talk about Chris Randy Whaley. Chris Whaley <clears throat> shout out. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the blitz right there, man. You never know who's going to get a shout out randomly. I love you that. know, I should put together a list like the most improbable victories for Texas during this decade because you, oh, you can have a top 10. Is in the, there. I think the A&M game in 2011 oh, with yeah. Case McCoy. And, no doubt. and you have like you yeah. had like no running backs, I think, were healthy for that that's game. Well, Mac Brown got a couple even early on. You know what I mean? That Mac Brown really kind of pulled out when he first got here. He had that Nebraska yeah. one early on. That was the main one with Major. And the getting one, well, no, I'm thinking like this decade, right? Because this is going to oh, go okay. down We're unless like okay. Texas, unless Tom Herman has a couple of like 11 yeah, wins. Yeah, not many then. I, yeah, I think unless Tom Herman. Texas' best win, Garrett Gilbert. Wins. It was four for 16 for, for 62 okay. yards. Unless Tom Herman has like a couple of 11 win seasons, like I think this is going to go down as the worst decade from a win percentage standpoint in the history of the program. Yeah. I can see that. So if you but you start looking like basically it's a list of like games Texas won that really they had no business winning in this decade like that Nebraska game the A and M game in 2011 the Oklahoma game Max last year the Oklahoma mm-hmm. game Charlie's second year and oh that was and then the Oklahoma, Oklahoma game 2013 was yeah, amazing. Yeah. Honestly, man, yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> that one was unreal. I, everything happened inside that, one that out bowl of nowhere. game against Missouri might be in there. Yeah, the the, the bowl game I'll tell you what, Missouri man, was because yeah. you and I was that the one you were late for that like you forgot your ticket. Oh yes, and had they're to come craziest back? Okay. like for hour yeah. of my life. Yeah, and I lost a contact lens driving to the game that day, so I basically had to watch the game with my left eye closed. Oh, you had a headache. Yeah, well, and like the like the one thing I is I can like see this like it happened it like yesterday. The one play I remember was the Case McCoy touchdown Mark. to Mike Davis 
And all I was thinking is like 99 times out of 100, if Case McCoy tries to make that throw, there's no way it's in that exact spot. But that was the one time that that throw, that ball was thrown exactly where it needed to be. Yeah, no, the Marcus Johnson yeah. one one was for me that went, because I was like right on that like 37-yard line that he caught it on. So it was just so cool to see it all break. And I was like the equator and he was just the end zone. Yeah, after that one was cool because you could see it open up. You yeah. could see the wheel open up. You're like, oh, man, perfect. this is this is big. But yeah, the Whaley game, the Whaley pick six and and then the DJ punt return. Those when those two things happen mm. in like a second quarter turning point, third quarter, like that's almost when you just knew the tide was going your way. I, yeah. the, the touchdown of Mike Davis is the one that I remember, and I was just like, man, it's just their day. That's why you got to give your Chris day. McCoy's props, man. <laughs> he was it was he was Mister Improbable. It didn't yeah. make any damn sense. It was irrational. So Rod, you mentioned the Missouri win. That was the last game we saw this Texas team play. That thirty-three sixteen win in the uh, Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl down at Energy Stadium. And when we start the schedule game, we got a couple weeks so we're going to really get into the schedule before we get to camp. Because really, once we get to camp, we're going to be talking more personnel and with this team specifically. So I want to take the next few shows. And really go through the schedule. And this week, I want to look at a piece that's up on the site right now. It's up on horse247.com right now uh, that Chip Brown put together. And it's basically looking at all 12 opponents during the regular season and looking at are they better or worse last year when Texas played them, which in the case of Tulsa, just are they better or worse than they were last year since Texas did not play them. Oh, that's easy. So would you like to go through the schedule, and we'll break this down, all 12 opponents? Oh, that's easy. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So Maryland, September 1st, 4-8 and eight last year. Are they better or worse than they were last year? They are worse because then they lose their wide receiver. DJ they lost DJ Moore. Yeah, they're worse. I know uh, they got quarterback depth. But. See, I think it's going to be weird with them. I don't think they'll perform as well they did against us, but they may be even slightly better, but I still think that might not be as good as what we saw from Maryland on the field for that game last year. Chip said better, and I would agree with him from this standpoint that he mentioned. They got quarterback depth. Tyrell Pigram and Kasim Hill are both back. All five stars on the offensive line are back for Maryland. That's pretty good. And Ty Johnson, who averaged almost six and a half yards a carry last year, is back. He had 132 yards on 12 carries against Texas. Now, granted, this is very different. It was a very different Texas run defense by the end of the year than it was uh-huh. in that first ball game. But I think you look at the fact that by the really two weeks, two games after they played Texas, that Maryland team was not anywhere near the same team that played Texas in week yeah. one uh, with all the injuries. And they had a lot of injuries on defense, too. I think Jermaine Carter, their linebacker, was out for a few games. I know Jesse on bottom, their mm-hmm. pass rusher. I don't know if he got hurt in the Texas game or a couple games after, but he didn't play most of the year. He's back this year. So I actually think Maryland is going to be better than they were last year. But I agree with Matt. Maryland will be a better football team, but I don't think they're going to replicate the kind of performance they had against Texas last season. Yeah. Yeah, they lose in Pete Groom. I mean, they lost so much afterward. And then it just seemed like the perfect event when you have a new coach, like something, because we saw throughout 12 games, it's like, oh, well, now I trust Orlando's ability to adapt. But at that point, Orlando, it seemed like, didn't even know his own personnel or which pieces needed to be in what spot because we just had a few glaring issues. Because think about that game. You get defensive scores all over, like non offensive scores all over the place, and you get obliterated by a team that literally for the rest of the year does nothing. But but against you with Pegram, like Texas just had a few deficiencies on defense, and that offense was able to bust big plays and take advantage every time there was a mistake. You got anything to add, Rod? Or? No. Go. Okay. <laughs> no, I thought we were like going through. Oh the, no, the I just didn't. I, I just didn't. I just didn't know if you had anything okay. to add to Maryland. Um, Maryland. So Matt and I think Maryland is better with the catch. Rod, you think they're not better than last year? No, I think they. I think that's an explosive playmaker. I think that's how they beat Texas was explosive plays. Mm-hmm. So that's the key. They they couldn't march down the field on Texas. They they needed to have those there. big plays. Tavon and Jacobs big down the field, and that offensive line, although really good, matches up against Texas like a defensive line. So I'm gonna say that they're strength on me, strength on strength. Yeah, you know what I mean like that's why they were big because Texas couldn't handle that guy. I forgot how many yards he had, and even on special teams he was big. Well, Ty, John, Ty Johnson was the one that had the the long the long kickoff return. I think that was right after the Reggie Hemphill punt return. Okay, if I remember right, he had the long kickoff yeah. return. So, Tavon Tavon Jacobs, who had a long touchdown catch uh, in that game last year, he's back. Okay, yeah. Pegram was quite efficient. It was nine of twelve for one hundred seventy five yards. Like that's. But to your yeah. point, Rod, DJ Moore it seemed like every time Maryland needed a big play in that game, when the momentum was going back you to Texas, go to DJ guy. Moore went and made could, it. Yeah. We've talked about that. Texas hasn't had a go to guy. First round pick. Go-to guy. So, okay, the next game is the the home opener against Tulsa. Tulsa was two and ten last season. 
Uh, Chip thinks they're better than they were last year. Rod, what say you? Mm, I haven't done enough research on Tulsa, so honestly, I couldn't tell you if yeah. they're better or worse. Truth be told, they were ten and three. They went from ten and three to two and ten yeah. last year. Yeah, I mean, not, I'll be honest. I haven't done a ton of looked at the experience a lot of yet of Tulsa. Recently. Yeah, so I couldn't really tell you. Okay, so we'll say maybe the same, maybe slightly better, but it, we'll place it. It's Tulsa, right? Do they do they turn their starting quarterback? Uh, they're actually having a quarterback competition uh, in camp. Chad President and Luke Skipper. Yeah, I mean, so. I but again, it's, it's kind of a push. Loses to Tulsa trouble. Right, yeah. right. That's kind of, yeah, okay. that's kind of a push. Now we're getting into the the nitty gritty. September fifteenth at home against USC. SC eleven and three last year. They better or worse than they were last year? Worse. I agree, and I think I, I'll. I just think I don't know, Matt. Is there an early line for this game? I, that check. might be there too far out. Couple, uh, I think there is one actually. Look, one second. I'm gonna go I ahead. Think and spill Texas th- was a. Yeah, I don't, I don't I'll go ahead and spill was, the beans on this. I'm gonna pick Texas to win this that game. That was a six point dog. If I'm not mistaken, well, I could be wrong. About I'm gonna that. pick Texas to beat USC. That's a big one. Because SC does return some key key uh, pieces on defense. Christian Rector, Porter Gustin. <laughs> Cameron Smith are back. Most of the guys in the secondary are back, but that was a secondary that Colin Johnson had his way with last year. Little Jordan Humphrey yeah, had his did. way with last year in that fourth quarter. Uh, even Amani Foreman was able to, to get loose and, and have a couple of big plays in the fourth quarter late in that ball game. Uh, but then, man, offensively, just you lose Sam Darnold, you lose Ronald Jones. Yeah, I, ah, man. But it's I just, USC. It's yeah. just USC. They're like, gonna have guys. They're gonna but, have some guys. We just don't know those guys are they unproven commodities. Honestly, a lot of Texas guys are unproven commodities. Right. Exactly. And that's <laughs> that we're hoping with too because they've been you know recruiting and they're bringing in some explosive threats. So I, I'm with you. I I think Texas got a chance to win. Obviously, last year is a primary example of that. But uh, Texas could Texas can't afford to get out coached. Right. Um, and there were times last year where Texas got out coached early on. Um, even Todd Orlando against Maryland, we just talked about that game, was out coached early on. So I think that's going to be in, in the key there in that game because I think uh, Clay Hilton's a good coach. Yeah, it opened up back uh, late May was USC a one point favorite, but I'm going to get a active line see if it's moved any. Okay. Sense. Okay. While Matt works on that, we'll oh, look at so Matt, you think SC better or worse than last year? Uh, worse. So we're all in agreement. SC is not as good a football team. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like a pick them right now. It reminds me a lot of the way that Notre Dame game set up against Texas, the second one back here after getting blown out. Just you know, a team pretty good, but like you still have a shot to win, and you'll probably get a ton of respect, even though you may not deserve it as much as you would have if you beat them the year before. Yeah. No, you remember how on top of the world everybody was <laughs> after that Notre Dame win? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. We're back. Uh, I don't Texas know. had a lot of work yeah. back games. I don't remember the line for that game. Yeah. I remember if Texas was a. I think it was about the same. Game. I think they might have been was a it? slight dog, like a f- six point dog. Okay. That was such a good feeling going into going into Belmont that Monday morning. Like everybody's smiling, and I got my coffee after a late night on that. That was a Sunday game. Yeah. So everybody's like kind of groggy, but it's like, yeah, Texas back in the top ten. Yeah. Just beat Notre Dame. Recruits are excited. Shane Bouchelle looked really good. The offense was clicking. Yeah. Man, things are good. And then we found out a few weeks later, it no, didn't last it really long. Wasn't. Notre Dame yeah. wasn't as good as we <laughs> didn't last. Yeah, exactly. That's what it no, was. No, that's why it reminds me a lot. Yeah. You know? It was a fugazi. It was a swift kick to the tenders back to reality a few short weeks later. Really, that Cal game, by the end of that Cal game, we're like, eh. Oh, man, that Cal game was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was brutal. Yeah. Turns out Cal actually had some good – I mean, that was Davis Webb, right? Yes. Quarterback? Good yeah. player. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no Chad player. Hansen, too. I don't know if what Chad Hansen's doing right now. Oh, but yeah, he had, the uh, wide receiver. Yeah. He was a good player, too. Yeah, Probably like, still with the Jets. Had like 14 yeah. catches Yeah, for a lot of yards. Yeah, he was drafted early on. And Texas was a three-and-a-half point dog at game time in that game. So. Three-and-a-half point dog, yeah. All right, September 22nd, Texas at home against TCU. The Frogs last year, 11-3. and three. They better or worse than they were last year? Man. Uh, oh, man. I'm going to say – that's tough, really, TCU. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, I'll I'm say, going to say slightly better. I'm going to say worse. I'm okay. going to say worse because I think they're going to have to – I could be completely wrong on this. I've been wrong, I think, once before. Yeah, um, but I think they're going to have to completely change what they do on offense to make it work with Sean Robinson, a quarterback. I think they're going to have to be – Less air really? rate passing and be more, yeah, be more of a quarterback run centric offense with Sean Robinson. But I mean, they've had like Boykin and in those offenses, they've had Boykin, uh, Trio Hill. I mean, they they've pretty much had that same type of skill set. No, no, but Kenny Hill and Trio Tr- 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 Boykin, for all intents and purposes, were pro style guys that just happened to be athletic. 
Okay. In Trayvon Boykin's case, really athletic. But Trayvon Boykin was a pro style quarterback. Like he okay. could he was very, 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 very advanced as a passer, even when he got to TCU and then you saw once Sonny Cumbie got there and Really? You don't remember his first, that first year he started? Dude, he was not that advanced. I'm gonna do, you gotta go watch Phil but that first year that he started. He was not that advanced. Go look at his stats. Hey, he probably should have. No, he probably no, should have no, been playing. No, that I, year. I, I, I'm going to disagree with you. Go look. I remember that first year that he started when he played against. I just, Texas, he was not that. I just remember Rod. I just remember he watching. Was straight up, kind of a dual threat guy. Yeah, they developed him as a he passer. He flipped in that offseason. He did. It was like it was, it was like a, a Lamar McCoy. Jack, yeah, it was a, it was a Lamar McCoy. Jackson kind of flip. I just remember dude, so. watching him in high school, watching the skill set, thinking this guy's not like a true like. Well, Not a true dual threat quarterback. This guy's a much better passer than people give him credit well, for. Well, I was wondering if he was playing like wide receiver early on. You know what I mean? But then <laughs> they, they, they literally was playing wide receiver slash quarterback credit, early on. credit credit Sonny Cumbie for getting in there and, and, and so he developed. Is my point. So, but I don't. I, so my, the same thing about this guy you talked about is supposed to be the number one dual threat quarterback coming out that year. I'm not saying he's not that much different than a Trevor and Boykin. I Andy. just th- I just think they're going to have to completely rechange change what they do. I don't think you can expect him to be what Trevon Boykin was. I don't even know if you can expect him to be what Kenny Hill was. I think he's going to give you more of a run threat than either of those guys gave you. But I think – But they've it, proven that they can also make it rudim, you know, like rudimentary. You know what I mean? Like they can, they can take it right. down. I just like, don't think – They've done that before. And this is, look, and I could be wrong. I just don't think it's as simple as they plug Sean Robinson in there, they're going to be fine on offense. Now, here's where I say – No, but Gary Patterson is a damn good coach and has yeah. proven time and time again that – you know, regardless of the quarterback, I'm gonna give you a good product. Which is why, which is why I think. Look, I'm not gonna pick Texas to beat TCU because if Texas proves they can win that game, I don't think Texas gets yeah. the benefit of the doubt against TCU. But when you look at TCU in the big picture, I think the thing where I might say maybe they're as good as they were last year. I don't think they're better, but I think where they might be as good is a the personnel they return on defense, especially up front, and b the fact that it's defense and it's Gary Patterson. They'll figure something out on that side of the ball to be competitive. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. not saying that that quarterback is going to be as good as a, you know Trevon Boykin like right away, or even as good as Kenny Hill was at his best, Trill Hill. But I think TCU has proven in that system that they can make make it basic enough where that quarterback can thrive. So yeah, maybe they do make it more run oriented. But I don't know if you you were saying that that's going to make them less successful. I was like, with, with TCU, they proved they can win with defense and running game and special teams. I guess yeah. I'm, wa- I'm waiting. They, I'm they, waiting. They, they, yeah. they can well, win almost any type of I'm way. waiting to see on TCU. I just don't yeah. think it's going to be, I oh, they're going to plug in Sean Robinson and win 11 or 12 games. No. Uh, I got to see how that's going to work. Yeah, again, I don't think I, 11 or 12, I would think that'd be an example. But 9 or 10, but I, don't I think, think I mean, what, nobody in the nation is going to win that many. But, yeah, 9 or 10 is possible. I think it's what people – yeah. Like, well, no, I, I think, think it be Robinson. better because, like, I, you said, like, the way – if you look at the entire team, yeah, one position in quarterback. But when you have somebody that is such a big prospect coming in and the rest of the team around them, it looks as if, like, at least when you look at some of the – Vegas lines or metrics, they're in that top tier of the Big 12, like a consensus, like top 25 team. Texas right there in like the top 30. But they'd be almost like the pure Texas. He's a redshirt, right? He did he redshirt, right? He redshirted, right? Uh, what class was Sean Robinson? Was he I'm 15? not sure, 2016 or something. But yeah. either way, he's a young guy that's so, going to be coming in. No, he, he was what class? Did he redshirt? Oh, okay. oh, I don't I'm know. Really I'm like, just, I'm just I'm, well, either Sean way. Robinson. He sat for a while, my point is. Yes, he's a yeah. young guy, but he was a big prospect. Yeah. So that's big time. U.S. Army All-American 2017. So he's class of 2017. So, yeah, he played last year as a true freshman. There okay. you go. Uh, when Kenny Hill got hurt. So, I mean, I'm TCU. I don't know. I'm going to say they're slightly worse than they were last year just because, again, I, I don't think it's – now here's one where I think we're going to be all over the place the next game on Texas schedule. So, so far we've got Maryland. Matt and I say better. Rod, you say worse. Tulsa, all due respect to any Tulsa fans listening to this, who really cares? It's Sterling Tulsa, Gilbert, Texas should win well, that game. I just, don't, yeah, I just don't know. SC, we're all in agreement. SC's not as good as they were last year. TCU – Rod, you for the record, you said better. Matt, where are you on TCU? Better. better. I'm Sam or possible Sam or worse. Kansas State, and this game is in Manhattan, so I don't know if that changes how you look at it. Kansas uh, State, definitely. Kansas State, Herman's first trip. Kansas State, Chip said worse. I say they're better, and it, and honestly, wow. if I'm ranking the ten, the teams in the Big Twelve from one to ten. I might have K State at number two. I'm gonna say yeah. it doesn't matter because it's Kansas State yeah, against Texas. Like I don't care if even if they're horrible all year, they're gonna play really well in that game against Texas. Is it's it like whatever you yeah. think? Whatever you think your baseline, okay. your baseline expectations for K State yeah. are, turn it up about a notch or two, and that's probably what they really are. Everybody's gonna be Nebraska. everybody's gonna be wrong on K State. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody, every everybody, it's every like year Mac is gonna Nebraska. be wrong on K State. You just 
I will say this: if that quarterback that that beat up on Texas last year, Alex yeah, Delton, the guy that should have played the, the whole time, the young one, yeah, Alex yeah. Delton, if he's coming back, <laughs> then I'm going to say they're better. And I think it looks like Alex Delton's probably going to be their guy over Skylar yeah, Thompson. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say they're better because then they can start building around him because Texas couldn't stop him. They just yeah. They couldn't find they couldn't they couldn't find an answer for him, and everybody knew what he was gonna do if they can just make him somewhat of a threat. To pass. And K State's one of those programs also that's proven, hey, we can have a quarterback that really can't pass, and we can still find ways to manufacture yards and points. Colin Klein, I mean, it, time and time again, they've got those guys. Uh, so I think they they probably could prove they could do it again. Yeah, I mean, and they can a guy who's not really a seasoned passer, but yet take care of the football, be efficient, be smart, and churn out yards and be able to move the chains. Yeah. I was hoping there'd be a futures line for this one, too. There wasn't. I saw TCU and Texas is pick them. So if anybody wants to think about that one, yeah, it's like that'd be a good one. But Kansas I'll, State, I would bet, would be pretty close to that. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna take TCU against Texas until Texas proves they can win that ball game. I just think TCU deserves a benefit of the doubt in that series. That's, uh, I, I feel that way about TCU's coaching too. K State yeah. too, Rod. I mean, they they return Alex Barnes, who was a good running back for them last year. I thought he had a really good bowl game against UCLA. Uh, they might have the two best offensive tackles. I don't think might. I think they do have the two best offensive tackles in the conference with Scott France and Dalton Rizzer. Rizzer's back from injury. Uh, I think France might have been banged up last year too. As a matter of fact, I gotta look back. I don't know. I don't know if either of those guys played against Texas. I gotta go back and look, but I know though they were banged up a lot last year. Uh, and then, like I said, with Gary Patterson defense, it's Bill Snyder and it's K State's defense. They'll they'll figure it out and they'll, be they'll find a way to be competitive. It'll be yeah, exactly. It'll be sound. And we know when you talk about K State special teams, they're gonna be good. Special teams. Okay, so we're all we're, we're all thinking K State's better than they were last I'm year. Gonna, well, we've, we've been around this conference long enough with the Big 12 yeah. to know that K-State's, you know, I mean, they're always going to sneak up on you. Right. And I will, <laughs> I will side with them being better than expected and worse. Mm-hmm. All right, the next game on the schedule is Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma was 12-2 and two last year, lost in the playoff. That's they easy. better or worse than they worse. were last year? Everybody knows that. That's yeah. easy. Yeah. Worse, yet still a 12-point favorite over Texas. Yeah, and I think they're scheduled to, I think they're predicted to win 10 games by most of the Vegas Odds uh, that I've seen. Oddly, I, this one sort of sets up. It just when yeah, I saw that I, line at twelve, it made me remember the is, Texas OU twenty thirteen when Texas was the huge dog and won, and then almost won again as a huge. dog. This is faith in the Oklahoma program, though, because Oklahoma. In Mayfield. You no know, people talk about the no, and not the not Mayfield, but because they had so Murray. many different quarterbacks throughout the years, and it doesn't matter. Exactly, they've had eleven different Big Twelve titles since Bob Stoops won his first title with seven different starting quarterbacks. You were like, man, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. Dibble, and hypo. there is even further confidence, at least from the NFL level, and that's maybe the Vegas Wise guys have that connection too, that Lincoln Riley is some offensive genius. Yes. He's the most creative mind in all of college football. And even that's why their recruiting right now is taking a spike. And offensively, it's because apparently these young guys, like they are riveted by that offense that Lincoln Riley has. It's simplistically brilliant, was what I've been told. And the NFL has had sent a lot of scouts down there, really, to kind of study it, right, and, and to figure out what what's make what makes it so unique too. On top and of Todd that, Orlando, you know, that's kind of going to be his job too to kind of yeah. figure out the way to start. That's going to be interesting. He's the best defensive coordinator, you know, right now in the Big Twelve. There are a lot of NFL teams like that are going to be looking at his defense as the antidote for the Lincoln Riley offense. He's got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't, then Texas will have no success. Right. And a lot of people <laughs> think that when you look at a guy like. You know, Murray replacing Mayfield. Mayfield might have been the guy that mentally was the perfect fit for the Lincoln Riley, like an extension of him on the field to execute everything. But the physical well, they're type, both air raid the physical groups. prototype would yeah. be a type Murray, who also sure. grew up in this type of environment, the same way that a guy like Mayfield and streamlined the process of learning the offense from Lake Travis to Tech all the way up. The same way that you see Murray be in those same roots with the DFW area since he was a young kid. But he happens to also physically be the best athlete in like baseball and football to play the position yeah. uh like i said i mean maybe this is the year where oklahoma will restart to maybe see a, a downward trend but i don't know until they prove it it's kind of like what i said about texas and tcu series until oklahoma proves that they're on a downward trend i, I yeah you have, to, you have to give them the benefit <laughs> I, i'm of just to be saying better, they're not they going to get better they made the college football playoff right. so i'm not i'm just yeah. saying they're not going to win a national right. title uh, you know they could still end up winning 10 damn games they got to right. beat bama to be better yeah, i think they're still the be best i think they're still the best that's all we're saying they're still the best team in the big 12 yeah exactly 12 point favorite over texas i couldn't believe that when i saw that but i was like yeah that's about right the other thing working in oklahoma favorite guys before that Texas game they'll have time to figure some stuff out would you like me to run down their schedule before the Texas game 
That's why Texas schedule. Sucks. Florida Atlantic at home, UCLA at home in the first year. Chip Kelly at Iowa State, Army at home, hmm. Baylor at home. Hmm. Yeah. So it reminds me of the 08 OU Baylor schedule. Baylor at home. That's funny. 08. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I agree. I mean, they they obviously will have time to and it, and Lincoln Riley knows that's a big game. I mean, that game for him is circled. Texas has got a couple of games like that, you know, early on where that's you know they're gonna get the best shot of a real of really good team. Yeah, you know what I mean, like that, and that that's gonna it's not gonna hurt you going to Oklahoma. You'll be battle tested, but who knows about the bumps and the bruises you're gonna Right, sustain. what does your depth look like by by that point? There you go. You know? you know what I mean? Um, the next game for Texas before a bye week is October 13th at home against Baylor. Baylor won in 11 last season. Is Baylor better or worse than they were last yeah, year? Yeah, they got to be better. Yep. Yeah, it can't be much worse. And I, have, I don't think they're going 0 12. Yeah, exactly. And have, yeah. Well, listen, I'm a, I'm a Matt Rule fan. I think Matt Rule is one of the best coaches in the country. I'm not going to lie to you. I think he's You're really, on that train, huh, Ron? I think he's damn good, man. And I, and I, listen, I, I don't know if you'll pull the, the Baylor football program out of the pit that it is currently in. Because of everything, the surrounding circumstances of the scandal and everything, but he is a damn—he is the guy. He's the guy now. You got a damn good coach. He's, yeah, he's legit, I do man. like the fact that uh, he's legit. they were. He really adjusted their offensive plan last year after you know what they were yeah. installing from Temple didn't work, and they went back to more spread stuff. Went to Charlie Brewer at quarterback. Uh, the guy offensively, I know Denzel Mims at wide receiver gets a lot of preseason love for them. Man, the guy I love. We didn't see much of him last year because he got hurt. I think he got hurt in the Texas game. Uh, Treston Ebner was a true freshman running back they had last year. Kid out of mm. Henderson who Texas recruited. Uh, Baylor got him, put him at running back. And go back to that West Virginia game, man. I thought he was damn good. He was electric yeah. with the ball in his hands and was able to do some really nice things. So I think Baylor's going to be better. Better's a relative term. I mean, improving from one win to four. I mean, uh, that's yeah. that's pretty good for Baylor. No doubt. Um, and you know, like you said, I mean, maybe I don't think they beat Texas, but – do they make that thing interesting? Because what if you're Texas? This is just the the stretch that kills you. What does your depth look like <laughs> after <laughs> USC at home, yep. TCU at home, at K State, and then the OU game? <laughs> what does your depth chart look like compared to what it was against Maryland? You're playing like uh, the two most physical teams in the Big Twelve, other than Oklahoma. <laughs> but we and we know that game is a different. It's a different ball of wax on its own. Exactly. Like you're one bad injury and, away from like it yeah. being a really bad start for Tom. And then you play like, a blue blood. You could lose all those games just because of the way yeah. last year you saw yourself play well in literally almost all the losses. Yet we're on the bad end of the stick of that. If that happens in this, you're two and four. <laughs> well, it basically we'll know everything about this team. We need to know. By the time they get through that stretch, even before they play Oklahoma, like right before that, mm -hmm. because if they're really good, if they can get through that stretch, they'll be a ranked team and they'll be a, a highly like publicized, you know, celebrated game. Um, it'll have a lot of, of uh, impact on the college football playoff implications and all that kind of stuff, like it should. Mm -hmm. If not, it'll be like the last couple of years where it really doesn't matter. Okay, so the OU game, game, the OU game is the sixth game of the yeah. year. What it's do you right there in the meat in the middle? You know what I mean. What do you guys think is a realistic record for Texas to have through six games, knowing what we just three read now with SC, six, TCU, three and three? Man, if OU, you could be, th if you could be, oh man, damn. Um, I mean, if you're four and two, you're good. If I was going to say, three, I, I, I would like them to be four and two. I think if you're four and two, you're in you're freaking golden. awesome shape. Yep. If you're three and three, that's where you have to be at the least mm. to not be. You know, in trouble because if you're if you're if you're at two and four, going into you're, Charlie you're in danger. Of, you're in danger of not making yeah the bowl game. But yeah. <laughs> <You laughs> like, I mean? so it'll all hit the fan. I guarantee and, you, and if that will hit the fan. Like you, you got to be three and three. So I'm like, well, I'm expecting four and two because I'm I'm saying they should be a nine win team. And look at so the win. I'm gonna say they got to go four and two, and the only two losses that I'm gonna be able to permit are gonna be Oklahoma and Man ooh Manhattan. Man, it's between the USC and TCU, and that's. I'll give I'll give them a win over TCU. Uh, I mean over over USC. Uh, I'll pick them. I'll pick TCU to win that game until okay. Texas. In that case, you got the purple kryptonite just thrown in the middle of that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you look. I'm at the gonna win. say, oh man, this is tough. That really's got me right there. Win probability mm. right now against yeah. TCU for Texas at 52. Uh, percent You look at FPI, man. Uh, this is gonna be mixed together. Yeah. And then okay. with okay. TCU 52, USC 46, Oklahoma at 28. And then I think K State up at sixty two. Okay, I'm going four and two then. Yeah, you're four That'd and be two. good because I've said that they got that I expect them to be a nine win team, so I got to go four and two. Well, because if not, then they're not going to make it to nine. 
Well, no way. Uh, the the good thing for Texas is after Baylor, you get a bye, and then you go to Stillwater to face Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State ten and three last year, and that ain't yeah. That's they better Oklahoma State better or worse? They're than worse, Western. but clearly they're worse. They're not. As but good Mike Gundy's Western. a damn good coach, and we know that offense is gonna be it. You know, it's it's gonna be ready. It's gonna be a prolific offense. You the know, defense with them always. You know, you know, going so. to Stillwater's never fun. It's, it's not gonna be it's easy never fun for perspective. Yeah. But we've beat them on the road. We didn't really expect to at times. Like I, got, you know, what I mean, so I've seen that happen that's not a place that texas i think should be afraid to play i don't think and, so. and go yeah you know what i mean like they, they've had success there this is a game even though, recently texas second lowest win probability just right above oklahoma so yeah vegas guys, they don't know what the hell's the big 12 going to like, stillwater too just yeah, valuing the road game yeah is the main nobody thing knows what the big 12 is going to be this is the key too. like all we know all they think they know is that oklahoma is going to be good but other than that like you said they're like four teams that are jammed right there so let's look at it this way I, a couple weeks ago for cbs i I got tasked by the by CBS and 24-7 to come up with the three most critical games on the schedule for Texas. Now, I know, you know a national pundit would look at the schedule and say, oh, USC and Oklahoma. Well, the Oklahoma game is critical every year, so to me that's, that's a, too a easy. different deal. Yeah, yeah. that's lazy. And lazy. SC, yeah, that's lazy. So to me, the three most critical games, you get the third one here. To me, it's, it's the Maryland game because, let's face it, if you don't win that game, then – Again? Yeah. Then suddenly, yeah, you know, everything we've been talking about this offseason with everything being yeah. positive and Every, this program heading yeah, in the right direction, it all goes in the trash Everything can. goes in the trash. All the optimism mm. of, of the offseason immediately if you lose that right. Maryland game. You lose all your street cred. That's why that one's critical. You're back, Anywhere in, the from Char- a, you're back in the Charlie Strong conversation yep. if you right. lose that game. Oh, because then you could be 1-5 and five at one point this season. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then you, there, Texas is the a 10-point favorite, 11 points in some books in that game. The second okay. critical game I identified was the TCU game for the fact that Mm. that series has been what it's been Lopsided. for the last few years, really under Charlie state. Strong in the first year yeah. of the Tom Herman era. The, yeah. uh, the last, You know, the last game Texas won in that series was 2013, yeah. max last year. Yeah. And keep in mind with that game, that was a close game, and TCU was, was driving, that and was then we had the lightning delay. 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 Yeah. We had the lightning delay. Burned yeah. his red shirt. And then Texas ended up, you know, I remember that one. surging ahead after the delay. Yeah. So it's been it's been not a good series no, like for that. Texas. And to me, the third game is the Oklahoma State game. And, Rod, for the reasons we've just been talking about, whatever your record is after that you know, six-game run, well, are you 3-3, three and three, are you 4-2? and two? To me, that trip to Stillwater, whatever you are at that point, that determines the rest of your season. So if you're 3-3 three and three after those six games, you well, you actually you would be – well, Baylor is – hold on. That's one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven. Okay, so the Baylor game is the seventh game. If you're 4-3 and three at that point – and you beat Oklahoma State to go to five and three, then all of a sudden you're thinking, okay, maybe you've got, depending on what your other loss yeah, is, maybe now that. you've got an outside shot to play for yeah. the Big Twelve title. You're you're relevant in the month of November. Yeah, but if you're three and three and end up four and three and then four and four, you're an average football team. Yeah, then mm-hmm. you're right back to where yeah. you've been for the last few years. It's one of those years yeah. also where it's a reflection game. You yeah. look at yeah. the schedule, and it, it, this has happened in certain years where you'll see Texas be front-loaded against the tough opponents because you always have Oklahoma early. So you get one of the powers. They all take on the tough teams, and then you have a team like Tech get to surge ahead, be undefeated in conference because they went non-conference, end up winning the first four. You look at Texas' schedule, last game's Kansas, second to last is Iowa State. Then your third to last is like West Virginia and another bottom team. So Texas has a back-loaded schedule of all the crappier teams, so you'll see – somebody come up from way down in the standings early on in the year just the way that you've seen Tech at times be 7-0 and and then 7-5 and because they hit Texas, Oklahoma, Baylor all in a row. So, Rod, yeah. if you're doing this, would you take Texas to beat Oklahoma State in Stillwater? Ooh, I got to, yeah. Okay, Matt, where, where yeah. are you at on that? With no Mason Losing. Though. You got a loss. So, Rod, in your scenario, Rod, if Texas is 5-2 and two coming out of that Baylor game, because they're you said you got them four and two after six five and two, five and two with a win over Baylor have to be there yeah if you're six and two after you win in Stillwater you're very much alive in in thinking about a conference championship okay yeah because this is the tough year this is the year where your road trips you have at Manhattan and at Stillwater inside like that doesn't ever look good for Texas so the next game on the schedule so we we all agree Oklahoma State not as good as they were last year. Uh, the next game on the schedule, West Virginia, seven and six mm. last year. They better or worse than they were last They're year? Better. Better. They better. Yeah, they better. Mm-hmm. They got nice receiving core too. 
Probably, yeah, probably one of the best, if not the best in the Big 12, you can say, and the best quarterback in the Big 12. That's, where, that's my thing. Texas Regardless of whether though. West Virginia is a better football team than they were last yeah, the year, they'll be better than the team that played Texas because chances are they'll get Will Greer for the whole game. I got that as a loss for Texas. So, really? Yeah. Okay. They're a bizarro world. Maryland. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think Hogerson, he's, he's up there. That get, the way that game went down last year was bizarre in West Virginia. Yeah. We all had to admit. It's kind of like that game you talked about with TCU. With the rain delays, it was a weird game for West Virginia at home. That's usually not the way you get, you know what I mean, a West Virginia team at home. They yeah. lost Will Greer. You know that that game is – that's the game that knocked him out. Dude, you heard his draft status. Yeah. That game is circled on Will Greer's calendar. True. He's ready to go. I agree. I think him and Dana Hogan said, and he's a damn good quarterback too. He's probably – Considered a first round prospect right now. He's probably the only first round prospect they ain't guaranteed that Texas is going to play this year. Yeah, yeah them on the, on the road, though, is always tough and late in the year. I'll still take Texas. They had. They, uh, no, West that game's Virginia's here. Good. That, that's that here. Well, well, I know, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why I'm, them on the road. I'm not taking I West Virginia on the okay. road. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I misunderstood I'm, you. Man, I'm going to take Texas at home. They're like a 66. I'm, this is like one of Texas's highest win probability games on the whole schedule. Yeah, and in Texas, we know it's not going to be a team that's going to win the Big 12, so they're going to screw up something. There you go. Yeah, my thing that's is, a hell. Remember, my, okay, this is, this is my Texas. This is fired this is, Tom this is Herman kind of game. One. This would be no, like one no, in seven. Not. No, it's not. It's 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 Texas. We it's Texas. Everybody high on Texas if they're whatever. Especially if they're six, six and wins, two, like you whatever. got them. Yeah. And then they come down back to earth because they are too too much sugar. On their back, as Mac Brown would say, and West Virginia knocks them back down to earth because West Virginia is pissed off from last year, right. and they got the best quarterback in the Big Twelve, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and he has a lights out game. And even Todd Orlando's defense comes back to the pack, like Will Muschamp's defense a couple of times had to come back to the pack. Like, all right, you know what? It ain't all right. Let's 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 regroup here. I think this is that game. This is kind of that. Other than that, then Texas, I got te- I wouldn't have Texas like winning. You know, many games. Win, no, not not. If they if they win that game, then I basically would have Texas like competing for the college football playoff. That's hard yeah. for like no, Texas they, is they, they they fall back to earth, and this is one of those games in my opinion. They fall back to and earth. that's impressive to have them that good th- that long because if you think about the gauntlet of USC and TCU, we've already talked about. You have at Manhattan, OU, luckily Baylor at Stillwater, West Virginia at Tech. So your three road games are Manhattan, Tech, yeah. And Stillwater. Yeah. And in between, you have USC and Oklahoma. Yeah. And then you're on the back end getting West Virginia or Baylor. Like, that's why I said, is this the Fire Tom Herman game? Because we just talked about we could e- easily see Texas losing all those games. Now, you could win them. They're going to be close. But that's a tough schedule where you're a tough schedule. three road games or that. You might you can give you Baylor and everything else. You could lose all those games. I can see this yeah. one. I've, I've got Texas. I can't go beyond eight wins, right? So I've got to find when we, exactly. when we break it down. I got to find <laughs> no way. losses somewhere. Yeah. But this is one of the few wins I have. I, I'm I'm with Matt though. The reason why I think you feel good about this one, West Virginia is one of those teams that they're late in the year on the road. They just yeah on the road. They just have just inexplicable an inexplicable performance or two somewhere along the way, especially in November. If you go back and look at their history under Dana Holgerson, they'll have and, and really I mean one of those was Charlie's first year when Tex they came they came to Austin. <laughs> and Texas won that game like thirty three or fourteen Hell, or something this like Rich Rodriguez John, man. Like, it's just so, West Virginia. Like Jonathan Gray. Jonathan Gray had like nine carries for hundred yeah, something yards. They had a quarterback this good in a long time too. Since Dana Holgerson's a quarterback guru. Right. And by then, Texas is going to be beat the hell up, and we know it. Like, yep. uh, and not saying they're going to be injured like in certain like important positions, but there's no way you go through that gauntlet and you don't sustain some injuries. And by then, West Virginia probably will be a little bit fresher than you. Yep. That's what I'm saying. And I think to and your last point time on that. Te- last time West Virginia came to Texas and beat Texas, they had a good quarterback. <laughs> right? mm-hmm. And they had, they had veteran, like veteran wide receivers. Go look at what West Virginia has. A good quarterback. Veteran wide receivers. And this NFL is another one of those years so where. So I think this is Dana Hogerson's game of, hey, give me an extension. Let me still be the head coach at Texas, which those are games that often happen in the Big 12, too. Uh, ask Cliff Kingsbury at Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Well, and this is one of the years, though, where Texas, you start off with. Remember last year there were no buys, so it was a weird schedule. It was like a front end loaded yeah. and back end loaded buy, so it was all packed together. At least with this one, you get the buy in mid October on the 20th. So you have your first seven games which involves a lot of that gauntlet then you come back from the bye for Stillwater and for West Virginia so your last five games after the bye you only have Okie State but then West Virginia Tech Iowa State and Kansas I so think you the, get your easy five on the back end look I think TCU and Oklahoma State and Oklahoma to an extent are going to come back to the rest of the league because I think that middle portion of the league is going to be better than it was last year overall but you look at the standings last year 
You had Iowa State, K-State, West Virginia, Texas, and Texas Tech. All five of those teams were within two games of each other. Yeah. You know, if you look at if you look at uh, at the overall standings, and some of that was bowl season, but Iowa State and K State finished eight and five. West Virginia and Texas finished seven and six. Texas Tech finished six and seven. Uh, I think I believe Texas and Texas Tech, and I don't know if West Virginia was six and six in the in the regular season or not. But you know, I think maybe you take that up and not. So, but basically, I think all those teams again with TCU and Oklahoma yeah. State now included. So you've got seven of the t- ten teams in the league that I think are all going to be right, right there. there. And if we're saying Baylor's getting a, you know three or four wins this year, okay, well they're going to beat somebody in the league other than Kansas, probably. Yeah, they're going to spoil somebody's yeah. uh, chance of being in. So the and I just think Rod, to to kind of what you were talking about, I just think it's going to be one of those years in this league where I think it, everybody's just going to they're it's going to cannibalize each other. It's going to be a mosh pit, man. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be just kind of a Royal Rumble. Yeah, I think that my Oklahoma might might be <laughs> ahead of the pack, but not by much. Right. <laughs> um. So okay, West Virginia. I think we all say to some extent better than they were last year. Yeah. At Texas Tech, Texas Tech better or worse than they were last year. People talking about this defense from Texas Tech. Is yeah, supposed to be I mean, I don't know. Texas I, always about the same. Texas Tech. There was really, one year with the the Crabtree year was the outlier. I, I I tortured myself for some reason to watch the Texas Tech spring game. I don't know why. <laughs> and it, was, it was on was the TV that better? night. I, I like Russ Auburn's defense. It was the defense. spring game. But I mean, I think. <laughs> that was also, also an acceptable response. I think, it was a spring game. I think they bring back like <laughs> nine or ten starters from last year from a ah, defense that wasn't, cool. that wasn't that bad last year. There you go. By Texas Tech standards, it wasn't that bad. And there uh, well, you know like they, were, they were competent. So, all they need is a, a, a competent defense because yeah. they're going to score points. And they were competent. If, they, if you last can just year. keep the other team from scoring 35. Out of forty every time, then Texas Tech probably can like win I, more. I games. honestly think like not just because they beat Texas. I think the Texas game is what Tech fans have been hoping for for a lot. Like you don't need your defense to be great, just hang around enough to where that one day when it's not there for the offense, just hang around enough to where you give your offense a chance to go win it at the end. Yeah, that's the idea of surrounding yourself with average players, so then you're as good as your superstars, which you're above. I mean, on offense, they do lose Nick Shimanek, Kiki Kuti, Dylan Cantrell, and yeah, Cameron Batson, also see. Justin Stockton. But I mean, I think they're probably the same as they were last year when you balance it all I out. Push with that. Yeah, I agree. With Ship that. said the same. I, I'd probably agree. I mean, so they're probably a, coaching for his job. Does that mean anything? Mm-hmm. He's definitely coaching for his job, right? Well, it's it's one of those deals, though, Rod. It's like where are you say his job, but uh, Tony Tipper, right? Maybe. Where Tony where Tipper. where is this team at with that mentally in November? Yeah. Are they are, has that galvanized them? Are they playing to yeah. keep their coach's job? Or they have they just thrown in the towel? Hey, you can play to keep your coach's job and steal your coach can lose his job, i.e. Charlie Because Strong. you lose to Kansas, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just, so it doesn't mean your heart wasn't in it. But it just, you couldn't get the result. Uh, the mis- misguided yeah, effort. Yeah, so yes. I think Texas Tech may be there because everybody loves Cliffy down there, but mm-hmm. you know, Lois Love got to do so it. So I think probably the same, maybe worse than they were last year. Uh, Iowa State, 8-5 and five last year. They better or worse than they were last year? Hmm. Uh, they're probably Man. probably going to be pretty did good because you've quarter- seen them maximize. Did, did they bring that quarterback Kyle back? Kyle Kemp is back, yeah. Yeah, I would say better. Better. I think they're the same or maybe slightly that better. Because de- that defense has been progressively, just the culture of it, getting a little bit better. Like yeah. Every, yeah, and the coach year. just, I mean, the idea that so, if you are building, you know, if you're a young coach at a place and now he's finally getting some of his yeah. players, it's just going to probably be a better version of what you saw. If you talk about yeah. quarterback, running back, wide receiver trios, Tell me one that's for sure better in the Big 12 than Kyle Kemp, David Montgomery, and Hakeem Butler. That Montgomery guy still yeah. there. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I, I think Iowa State's better, man. I do. Mm-hmm. I'm not, not saying that they're going to be a that's danger. The, that's the home finale for Texas. You think Texas wins that game? Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they win. But I'll tell you that. I, I, don't, I mean, I think Iowa State's a, co- a program that's getting better, and I know that they're searching for one of those um, program building wins. Well, hell, they got two of them last year. They beat OU on the well, road and beat State's, TCU. I, they get one or two every year, right? That's yeah. their thing. They yeah, get they, one. Yeah. Even though Tom Herman said that, he said when I was there, we got Oklahoma State. We get we get one or two they every year. Got Nebraska year. one year. Yeah. In so Lincoln. who is it going to? Uh, hopefully Texas can avoid that. I have Texas avoiding that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, mean, I got my three losses in for Texas already, so I'm assuming they go. But you know, we we that. said you know Iowa State's one of those perfect teams that plays spoiler somebody maybe. Yeah. Maybe Oklahoma State's in the mix, and they go to Stillwater and and beat Oklahoma State, or they go to Fort Worth and, and beat TCU. Yeah, something along those lines. I mean, I this game. You know, like, Oklahoma. You know, Oklahoma's got that game circled on the schedule after what happened. I agree. In oh yeah, revenge. Yeah. And then Texas ends it with uh, the return to Lawrence, returning to hmm. the scene of the crime. <laughs> oh, yeah, the yeah. day after Thanksgiving, <laughs> is Kansas better or worse than they were last year? 
They're worse. I actually think they're worse. They're man. worse. Oh wow! I, think they're worse. I don't know. They are. I think they're worse. <laughs> yeah, they're worse. I really you lose, so you lose Dorrance it. Armstrong yeah. offensively. I don't think they were that good yeah. anyway. I no, think they're, they're worse than they were yeah. last year. <laughs> Unfortunately, they about are. three years and they've beaten one D one team and that's Texas. <laughs> Why do you bring that up, man? Yeah, man. It's Why absurd. They beat because it's the most absurd the stat ever. That, because it's just know. worth mentioning. That's the game it's that got insane. Charlie fired, though. Yeah. I mean, that's how I mean, bad that, that's how bad that loss was. Because that game Charlie changed Texas history. Yeah. Well, yes, it did. It's hilarious. But can you imagine, it's like, hilarious. can you imagine that the, Iowa State game that, almost did? The can year. you imagine the lack of atmosphere oh, in man. Lawrence, Kansas, at Memorial Stadium? The day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday. It's an 11 o'clock kick, Rob. On Black Friday. We better watch Black out, Friday. man. Dude. Oh, man. I can't or Texas that. will be up by 50 at half. It's, uh, it's going to be one or the other, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm, well, that's a dangerous game, though. I, honestly, that's kind of a trap game. No, that's so scary. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I say Kansas has the most underrated home okay, field advantage that's in the Big yeah. It's so Herman boring. Games. And you got, what, do you, what are they playing for at exactly. that point, too, is going to matter. Right. That what, what, that's why the Iowa State game can be kind of a trap game. What are you playing for at that point in the season? You know what right. I mean? Like, we got to know. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. I would have Texas probably at that point at 7-4. 7-3. 7-4 going into game 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd have them um, eight and eight and three. Three at that point. So you're playing for you got them playing for a ninth yeah. win. So that's something. It's something to play for. Yeah. You know? No, it would be. That that'd be huge. Texas hadn't had. It's that probably since you know if 2012. Two thousand two thousand twelve. Yeah, that was nine and four. Yeah, not. You're talking about a regular a regular season with yeah. nine. It was oh nine. Mm-hmm. Wow. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are some sad oh, stats to yeah. end it. Guys, come on. Yeah, but that's Mac what I'm saying. Brown, like, you know what? Ten wins mean look, when nothing. You're right, though. I mean, that's why it would be big. So, yeah, that's why I, that's why I got him. When I, I got him. When I've been on, when I've been, strong. when I filled in on the horn, and I filled in for, I sat in for Chad last week on the afternoon show. I sat in for E on B and E on Friday, and I'm saying, look, I've got Texas about eight wins. People are like, oh, what are you talking about, man? They're going to win ten or eleven. You know well, what? how long, how long are people going to say that before you realize, man? This team hadn't won consistently in a really long damn time. Well, whoever's got 10 11, that's unrealistic. Well, that's I have nine, and I'm thinking nine right now is, you know, a little I, too homery. Well, no, I mean, I'm being I kind feel the same to way. them. But Vegas has them at eight and a half. Las yeah. Vegas Superbook has them at eight and a half. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I would take yeah. the under, man. I just Hell, can't. I just think 11 crazy. Phil Steele's got him at his number 10 uh, team. Phil Steele's got him at, yeah, he's got him at 10 wins. Yeah, I think. I'm not, so, uh, dude, yeah. I'm not, uh, nine wins to me makes sense but yep. i agree when you go through I the can't, schedule i can't go past eight when you go through the schedule it ain't it ain't no. it ain't easy because like, that's that's when somebody says yeah. 10 or 11 game, games i just mean like okay you haven't looked at the schedule nine it's like wins. you haven't looked anything into this yeah. it's just a number you pulled I, out of nowhere no my nine wins is that's my max right now you know what i mean i'm not going past nine and that would win you money in vegas nine that right is now. on that but end. vegas has been eight and a half so i'm just betting a little bit over that's it so, just to recap, yeah. we'll go we'll run down the schedule one more time just kind of before we get out of here this week. Uh, Maryland, better. better. That's where we're at. Tulsa, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> US- Sorry, Tulsa. But that's Oklahoma, so screw you. Yeah. USC, they're worse. TCU, what's our consensus on TCU? Matt, you say better? Did you say better? Uh, yes. Rod, you say better? Uh, yes. Okay, so whatever I say, I lose to you guys. So, we say TCU is better. We all say K-State is better. Yeah. Oklahoma's worse. Yeah. Baylor's better, Oklahoma State's worse, West Virginia's better, Texas Tech about the same, Iowa State about the same, maybe better, and Kansas probably worse. Yeah. There you go. I got that. Yeah. I mean, right now I, I'm more optimistic because a lot of those teams we talked about are changing quarterbacks too, so that helps because Todd Orlando, that's our strength versus yep. what will be perceived as a, not a weakness but at least a question mark. Uncertainty right. In a conference that. where that means the most. Well, that means a lot. Yeah. So we'll get more into the schedule next week. We'll start breaking it down even more. We've got a couple weeks to do this before we get to camp in uh, late July slash early August, and we can find out, uh, figure out. We'll pin down win totals and do the whole thing before uh, before the Longhorns start practicing. Matt, thanks for everything, man. You're more than welcome. Rod B., appreciate the time and the knowledge. Anytime, buddy, anytime. For, for Matt, for Rod, for Travis, the best damn videographer in the podcast game for everybody at the Austin Radio Network. One or nine Horn. HornFM.com, World Bottom of the Horn app, AM 1260, where you can hear Rod B each and every weekday from 1 to 3 on the Rodcast. Famous plug. Thanks to Matt. You get us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, anywhere you get your podcasts, and always get this podcast and all of our archives on the Longhorn Blitz SoundCloud page. Yep, just type in Longhorn Blitz. For the Horn family, for the Horns 24-7 family, I'm Jeff Howe. Thank you so much for downloading and listening, and we will catch you again 
on the next episode. You've been listening to Longhorn Blitz with Horns247.com. Remember, for the latest Longhorn news 24-7, visit Horns247.com.